Hello, scrapbookers and creative friends. I'm Linda Patuk. I'm a Creative Memories Independent Advisor in Jupiter, Florida. Welcome to Thursday Thoughts. And today my thoughts are all about watermelon. Uh, I love watermelon as my favorite fruit of the summer. I do also enjoy the cherries and the blueberries and the peaches, but watermelon is my number one treat that I love. So I call today's Thursday Thoughts Sweet Summer. And I'm gonna show you some of the papers that I've used, but also I'm gonna teach you a couple little watermelon uh, embellishments and border that you can make um, if you have these tools. So I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. Now, this is our beautiful new summer break um, collection. Um, this is the paper pack. And what, you know, if, if you are using, been using Creative Memories for a while, you know that we have the coordinating cardstock colors here. So primarily the, this is what I worked with today. Um, and I did, sh I did use a couple of pieces of some older summer paper, which I'll show you some um, things that I made. But I use these, I just love all of these bright, colors and i also like the fact that it's not specifically themed for beach or, or pool or whatever it's they're very generic i think you'll find a lot of good use if you haven't gotten these i think you really would like to do that so let me start just by showing you the first pages that i made so these are um this is a piece of the summer break paper which i i cut to 11 inches square um, I took so I took a little bit off of each of off of each side and then I made a frame out of it a one inch frame and you'll see that I used the piece I cut out I used in another page but then uh, this is an embellishment it was a mat and all I did was use the custom cutting system cut it into an oval and this was uh, one of the little special embellishments if you ordered this was a bonus pack with the little happy sunshine if you did one of the buy one get one uh, one of the the, one of the recent promos with, that we had. and But then this is one of the embellishments that comes with the summer break um, collection. So this I'm already ready for two. Uh, this is four, these are four by six. So of course I'll have to have to um, make my pictures a little bit smaller. So here's one. And this is on the tangerine cardstock, which is one of the car coordinating pieces. It's a tangerine cardstock. Now the next one I want to show you, this is where um, I said I used a different piece of summer paper. This was not, this is not from our current summer collection. This was an older summer collection, but I want to show you, you might have some of this watermelon paper, or you could even try this just with, with green paper, or maybe if there's a the green ombre kind of paper. So all I did was cut the semicircle. I used the, the um, our jumbo circle, and I cut the semi, cut this, and then cut it in half, cut the semicircle. And then this is the border maker cartridge called Scallop Wave. And that's what I used to be like bites out of the watermelon. And on the back, I just added a strip of black to make it look like seeds coming through. So this I used. This is pretty thick, so you know you, it takes up a good space on your page, but it makes a wonderful place, a landing place for a journal box. You could also, of course, put on um, more photos here or other embellishments if you'd like. But I love this. This paper reminds me of a, of a just a checkered tablecloth for summertime. And these are also embellishments from the summer break collection. And, you know, I use a lot of top-loading pockets. So this, on the back of this gingham paper, this is beautiful kite paper. So, you know, I, you know I, like to, I like to get the use out of both sides of my paper. That's why I usually use those. Now, because I'm so watermelon crazy, I really wanted to use this watermelon paper, but I decided to do something a little different. So I know I already put the mats down, so it's a little difficult to see, but what I did was I used this, this um, square. I don't remember what it exactly was called, but this is from our custom cutting system. And I used the red blade and I cut out the inside of the watermelon paper so that it made a frame, but a really interesting frame. And then I used the other piece, the piece I took out, I put it over here and then I added the mats. So I turned this into a two page, it could be a double page spread, or it could be the front and it could be the back in a top loading pocket. Again, these are embellishments from the Summer Break collection, which I have popped up. Some of them I popped up on Foam Square Summer. Some of them are flat, but you're all ready here. You can mount a special photo. This is one of the, uh, one of the mats, one of the photo mats. You can mount a special photo here and then you have room for four others and a journaling box. I just, crazy about this watermelon paper. Now here's another one that I took out the 
I cut a frame out of the center and I made it, I made it a pretty large frame because I really wanted to enjoy those slices of summer. And so I made that uh, like this. This I would use for either one special photo. You could do uh, four, four by four photos or three by three photos in the center. But the, I just think the paper is just wonderful and just screams of summer. The piece that came out of here, I used on this page. I wouldn't necessarily use it as a double page spread. You could. Um, but then you see here, I use it as the center to frame other photos. And this uh, these were strips that I had left from uh, one of the other pages that I made. Now, I bet you're wondering about these adorable little watermelon slices down here at the bottom. That's one of the things that I want to show you today. Now, in order to make these water, those watermelon slices, um, I, here are my notes. I used, I decided to use the shimmer paper for these little watermelons. So you're going to use our medium circle from the custom cutting system, and you will be using all three blades. So to make the largest one, if you, if you look at these blades where the pegs are and where the, the actual yellow blade is, you can see that they're spaced out a little bit more. So this red one would be the closest inside, then this would be out a little bit uh, long, uh, larger, make a little bit larger circle and this would be the largest one. So for this you're going to use the the blue blade for the green that would be this represent the skin of the watermelon. The green blade on the white shimmer then that would represent the um, the rind of the watermelon and then the red with the red shimmer and that would be the flesh or the, the juicy part of the watermelon that we eat. Now in order to make a um to, so we you know we put this let me just put this all together so after you cut your circles i use repositionable tape for all of this so i'm going to add i don't know why i turn it over it's the same on both sides but i just do so you're going to put the rind on top of the skin then let's put the juicy part i'll oh, see it's a little bit off that's why we use repositional tape. I have found that when I'm uh, cutting a little piece, little pieces of paper like this, you can see a little bit of adhesive here. Sometimes it's worth popping a little bit of adhesive down here and you can clean this with alcohol and one of those magic sponges, but I find it holds it better when I'm cutting. Okay, so let's get the red part on. I probably should have put a little bit more adhesive, but I'm going quickly now for this. So here we have the watermelon slice, but we're not going to do a, a, a um, seedless watermelon. We want to do watermelon with seeds in it. And I found the perfect tool for getting watermelon seeds. And that is uh, the citrus slice watermelon. I mean, it was a lemon, supposed to be for citrus, obviously. It was when we did uh, lemons. Um, it's great for oranges and lemons and so forth, but these are the perfect watermelon seeds. So what I did was I cut them in black because we want to make sure it looks like a watermelon. So I collected these and don't feel like you're wasting the black citrus slice because if you are, you can always use it, the black to offset another color. Um, it makes, it just adds a little bit more dimension. So don't feel like you're wasting it. You get, it's kind of double duty because you can use this for the, um, for the seeds, but then you can use this to offset your citrus slice, which I'm going to show you something else in a minute. All right. So once you've done that and you have your seeds, you really, really, really want to have one of these lifter sticks because this is so helpful. Now, sometimes I, I will use the, the glue, the liquid glue on these um, kinds of projects, but I discovered that it's actually better to just use your repositionable tape. So what you do is go around where you think you want to have the seeds. We won't put them in the very middle. And then you get your lifter stick. Come on, you can do it. There we go. And we'll put them on here. I, you notice I have my multi-purpose tool here because sometimes they get a little bit wonky. Now you can spread these out on the table better. All right. Speed this baby up. Lifter stick helps a lot, but if you can pick them up, that's also another way to do it. Just makes it a little bit faster. Let's get our little seeds on here. And then to make the slices, um, this is kind of an old school way to, you know, make get wedges out of a circle, like if you're making pie wedges or something like that. But I just love this, the look that it makes. And the reason that I put the seeds first is that I think when you slice it then it looks a little more realistic. It doesn't look like somebody created this out of paper. It looks a little more realistic and I like that look. 
All right, so I have discovered sometimes I need to add a few more seeds, but that's not a big deal. I can do that after, uh, after I, I cut it. All right, so once you've done that, you can gently just rub off the adhesive. This is that repositionable. It is the best thing since sliced watermelon because it has helped so many projects. All right, so once we've done that, then we're gonna bring in our 12 inch trimmer. And the design of the trimmer actually works really well uh, cutting a circle. Because we have this little space up here, what I do is I just turn it and I do kind of look at where I have my seeds. And if you put this up here, it's going to, it's gonna, it's gonna basically be in the middle if you have a uh, space between those two. So then you cut this in half and then you can just keep cutting. The first cut to make it in half is two and three quarter inches if you're using that medium circle. Cut it and you, you could stop here and just have four beautiful wedges like this or you can go and cut it some more and all you do there I found uh, that when you do the quarter cuts or the would be the eighth cuts I found it better to turn it over have the curved edge there and put the tip that point of that triangle right on the cutting line which is very very visible on this wonderful trimmer and then once you put it down you can adjust it if you need to and then we have some wedges, okay? And once you have this ready, then you can start accommodating them onto your pages or borders, which is what I wanna share with you right now, our delicious watermelon slices on page and border layouts. So here was the first one you saw already, but now you see how I came up with that. That was the eighth cut of the, um, of the slice and makes a nice corner feature here. My next page I want to show you. Now this one, um, this is again is the summer break paper. I just loved it. I decided to use this climbing vine chain uh, border maker cartridge because pump a uh, pumpkin. <laughs> Watermelon does grow on a vine on the ground, so I wanted to make sure I had a vine kind of a leaf on there, um, and so that's what I did. And then all I did was cut the 12 inch border with the border maker cartridge and fold it over to make a little corner feature, and then put the larger slice down here, and now I have a beautiful little stage for some photos. This is on the baby blue cardstock, one of the coordinating cardstocks. Let's keep looking. So on this one, I loved this paper. And I think, I guess because watermelon looked like water, that's where I went with this. <clears throat> and I did this so that you could use it on either edge, but because, because you have the watermelon just kind of, you know, it's kind of willy-nilly there placed at angles. It wouldn't have to necessarily just be on both sides. You could very easily make them at the top. You could have your watermelon vines at the top, or you could have them at the bottom. You could even have them in the middle if you wanted to do that. Because if you're mindful of where the stripes are and make sure you lay them on the paper the same way with the stripes coordinating, then it's no problem. You can be real flexible with that and shift them around. So there we have it. Um, on the, again, here's that vine, the climbing vine, border maker cartridge. Let's look at the next one. I was so excited with these. Oh, I forgot the most important thing. You know, that gingham, I love that little gingham, but I was thinking this would be really nice to do your, you could do your uh, journal box here and then maybe a feature photo here and then add some other, I would do some red photo mats to add your other photographs on here. I just think it's so cute. And remember that um, there are other, there are other photo mats. Like you can see these have blue on the, on the flip side, but there are other mats in the um, sweet or the summer break collection. But I just love that little gingham tablecloth look. All right, let's take a look at the next one. You can see more of that game peeking out. So next we have borders. I'm gonna use this red gingham as the base. I made a mat from the mat pack. Um, I decided to use that, that ombre kind of look. And be, the reason I did that is because I used that ombre paper with the, uh, it says good times on the flip side, but I used that. So I thought that would be kind of fun to put on um, on the page as a border, but then also have the mat so that you can coordinate those together. Just love these watermelons. Let me move this out of the way a little bit, and let's look at some of the others. So this one I did, <clears throat> I did two of these on the flip side of this ombre color. 
to two of these so that you could possibly even make a double page spread. Okay, you could put these together, have them on a double page. And again, because the um, watermelon are at an angle, you know, you can use them in different places. You could even put them on one page if you choose to just put them on one page. Again, you can do it on this beautiful gingham if you want or have one. One would really, really be enough and you could do that on two pages. But there is that. And the last border that I made to show you with the wedges is this one. And this one I decided to use our, um, it's a standalone punch from oh, a few years ago, border punch with these uh, with the dining wear. And I thought that would be fun because the best thing about watermelon, of course, is eating it. So I thought we'd do that and um, have the, and this is an embellishment popped up on foam squares. Now I have one more little watermelon border I wanna share with you. Now, when we had the Citrus Slice Border Maker cartridge come out, and, and by the way, if you're not familiar with this, is our Border Maker cartridge system. And then we have interchangeable cartridges that you place inside here to cut, um, to punch a 12 inch border. But Noreen Smith was talking about uh, what if, if we, what could we do? And I really loved watermelon so much. I like this, the citrus. I used it a lot for my pages, but I really wanted watermelon slice border. So this is what I came up with. So I used, uh, this was not shimmer, but I did punch them, repunch them for you to show you with shimmer paper. So again, we're going to use the same procedure. We're going to start with the skin of the watermelon, and then we're going to add the rind. I'm going to use my repositionable tape. And what you want to do is you just want to have, leave a little space so that, so the skin shows. And it looks like the skin of the watermelon. Don't worry about the uh, lining up. You do want to have the you want to have the skin show, but don't worry about the holes because then what you do, you punch a green, you punch a white, you punch a red. But in order for the seeds, because this is curved, you can't really put a strip of paper. I discovered that this old is an old CM punch uh, with hexagons that they cover those holes up perfectly, and then that can be my uh, that can be my red part of the slice, the interior of the watermelon. Put that on here, and you have your slice of watermelon for a border. Yummy. And I, I kind of liked using the shimmer this time because, you know, it's juicy and, and, and it's wet and juicy. So I thought, well, the shimmer is kind of nice because it looks all shimmery. Of course, it's called shimmer. But that is what I did for the slice of watermelon. I hope that you um, try some of these because they really are fun to do. I hope that your summer and your scrapbooking is sweet and that you have uh, that you that you that you are inspired to try a few of these ideas. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this gave you some good ideas. Now, if you have an advisor, please shop with your advisor. But if you don't have an advisor, I would love to be your advisor. So, and I have links below that have the products that I used and the way to access those. If you haven't treated yourself to this summer break paper, it is really beautiful. I think you would enjoy it. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, eat watermelon and happy scrapbooking.